for no particular reason, gut health is very complicated for many people. So I thought about several different titles for this video, such as this one, Gut Health, the Truth Without the Confusion and Hype. Gut health, the truth about the gut microbiome, another word that's used and it can be confusing for people, and what to do about it. And then finally, gut health, making sense of the gut microbiota and probiotic supplements because the general view of things is that the way to improve gut health re uh, primarily relies upon eating fermented foods and taking probiotic supplements. Not that they are not useful, important, helpful. They are not the key to the health of our microbiota. So recently there was a paper that was published and it got some press in the mainstream news about how bifidobacteria, this particular uh, 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 strain, bacteria, bifidobacteria longum, you can see NCC3001, reduces depression. And so when you see this, you think, oh man, I'll, I'm depressed. My gut bugs me. I got IBS. I'll take it, and, I'll, and my depression will be will be cured. That is kind of how the messaging goes, and that's not what these papers show, actually. So, why would somebody with IBS have depression? Well, one of the reasons is because uh, the gut flora, your gram-negative bacteria, they release into circulation endotoxin. And endotoxin, once it hits relevant levels in, 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 in an individual can lead to various symptoms. One could be diabetes, type 2 diabetes. Another could be actually low testosterone in guys and depression, among many other potential symptoms. But you can see how diverse they are. So endotoxin elevation can have diverse manifestations from person to person to person. And if we go right back to the start of this whole thing, what do we see here? We see sugar, flour, refined oils that are salted. And that's what the average American lives on. So the real issue is getting rid of endotoxin. We gotta stop creating excess endotoxin by creating an, an, a bacterial flora imbalance by reducing these calories here. So in this study, uh, actually I talked about the endotoxin relationship here. If you wanna watch this video, I did the Deflame Diet Basics. It goes through the steps by which sugar, flour, refined oils lead to endotoxin and then to chronic inflammation. Okay, so back to the paper. They use what was called the Hospital Anxiety and Depression Scale. You can say they got D for depression, A for anxiety. So these were the anxiety questions, these were the depression questions, anxiety, and so on. They had seven depression questions. They had seven or statements. They had seven anxiety statements to which we are supposed to assign a number, three down to zero. Higher the score, the greater the, the chance that you'll be depressed would be. So how does the scoring work? So seven or less, normal, no anxiety, no depression, eight to 10, borderline. And then if you're uh, 11 to full 21, then you would end up with uh, being likely to be suffering from depression or anxiety. Okay, so understand that if my score is 18 and I take something like ginger, turmeric, or a probiotic, and my score goes from 18 to 16, I'm still depressed, right? I'm still depressed. Why am I describing it like that? Because studies like this, and this is what does not get described in most blogs and articles, uh, news, news pieces. They don't tell you the details. So I highlighted the details, and we're going to look at the ones in yellow. So we had 22 patients with IBS, and they got the bifidobacteria. 22 patients with IBS got placebo. What was the outcome? So they did the, the, the anxiety depression index at week zero, so baseline, week six, and then at week 10. So at week six, 14 of the 22 patients with IBS and depression who took bifidobacteria had a reduction by two points, okay, two points. Seven out of 22 patients who were taking placebo had a reduction in two points. Now remember, two points can take you from 18 to 16, still depressed. Two points can take you from 14 to 12, still depressed, still anxious. So you have to look at the numbers and realize that two points could be statistically significant but clinically meaningless for a given individual. So let's look at a better way to look at gut health. And it's not about taking supplements or just drinking some kefir juice or eating some sauerkraut. That's not how you wanna look at gut health. This paper is free. And it's by researchers who are looking at, uh, ultimately, John Cranston is a, is a pain researcher and spent a lot of time looking at the gut, so he's a great guy to look at. This paper is free. You just got to put this title in a Google search field, and it will come up. 
this is what the paper looks like in PDF format. You can see it was published in 2017, so this year. And this is one of the pictures that it shows us. This is an example of what's referred to as a healthy diet, a non-Western healthy diet, because these are just whole foods. Now, whether you're a vegan, if you're a vegan, you say, ah, forget these guys. But if you are a meat eater or a non-vegan, you would see something very similar from a vegan to a non-vegan. That would be what is lacking. And what is lacking, of course, is sugar, flour, refined oils. That's what's lacking. And that's why, and that's why this diet is healthy. So we got another picture to look at. So you can look at this article and say, hey, I'm a, I'm a lay person, a lot of complicated words. Yeah, but you can deal with pictures. So here, let's look at a simple picture. Here we are. Simple picture, sugar, flour, refined oils, salted. Take the meat and cheese, throw it over here. Fish and cheese, big deal. Meat and cheese, no big deal. Plop it over here, healthy. I'm not a big milk guy, take away the milk. Okay, so we had, and I'll be a much more vegetation guy, so I throw a whole lot more vegetation in there. So a whole bunch of different options for a non-Western, non-inflammatory type of diet. The main thing, of course, is keeping sugar, flour, refined oils out and maintaining proper caloric balance for you, whatever that means for you. Okay, so remember, they gave a bifidobacteria supplement that improved mood, right? It reduced depression, improved mood. So if you eat a healthy anti-inflammatory diet free of sugar, flour, refined oils, you get naturally more bifidobacteria. So when you have this bacterial flora composition, and we're not going to look at the other guys, no big deal, we get improved mood disorders. So just eating this way is a mood-improving scenario. Now we look over here, the average American lives on sugar, flour, refined oils, a picture like this, everyone just goes, ah, yeah, the cheese and the burger. Well, no, the average American, most of their calories comes from sugar, flour, refined oils that are heavily salted. What's the outcome? Bifidobacteria depression. What they give to treat depression in these patients? They give them bifidobacteria. So why not stop eating this crap and get our bifidobacteria back normally? So when we end up with a reduction in bifidobacteria and, and similar pro-inflammatory changes with these bacteria... We lose anti-inflammatory short-chain fatty acids. What's the outcome? Increase in anxiety and depression. So this diet flames up the, the body systemically and the gut, and the outcome is chronic inflammation and, depending upon your disposition, depression, anxiety, migraine headaches, low testosterone. The list goes on and on and on. So the problem is what we see here. The average person goes, oh, look at pepperoni is the problem and meat's the problem. And eh, no, it's not those guys. That's the big problem. The big problem is a lack of vegetation and too much sugar, flour, and refined oils. And, it, and the outcome is brain dysfunction, low-grade chronic inflammation of the brain, and symptoms such as depression and anxiety. So what should we do? It's the same old story with me. We want to get rid of the pro-inflammatory calories and replace them with anti-inflammatory vegetation. If you want to be a meat eater, no problem. Get rid of your sugar, flour, refined oils. You want to be a pescatarian, fish eater, no problem. Get rid of your sugar, flour, refined oils. You want to be a vegan, no problem. Get rid of your sugar, flour, and refined oils. So if you like this video, a whole lot of ways to keep track of this type of information. You can see my YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, and website for more information.